John Paul with your weekly update for January 23rd. Although Congress was back in session for scarcely more than a day last week, private citizens across the country managed to cause an uproar felt across Capitol Hill. The uproar took the form of hundreds of thousands of phone calls to both senators and representatives, urging them to oppose two draconian new bills that threatened the free and unbridled flow of information on the Internet. On Wednesday last week, dozens of prominent websites like Wikipedia, Reddit, and Craigslist were blacked out in protest of two bills known in D.C. jargon as SOPA and PIPA. SOPA is the House bill. PIPA is the Senate companion. These bills ostensibly will combat Internet piracy, and, of course, we are also told they will help us wage the never-ending war on terror. What these bills actually do is force website owners to police the Internet, create entry barriers to the only relatively free and open medium of communication, and threaten to break the technological structure of the Internet itself. They also violate the First Amendment's right to freedom of speech and our Fourth Amendment freedom from unreasonable searches and seizures. SOPA and PIPA have been drafted not only without respect for the Constitution, but also without an understanding of how the Internet works. These bills attack the very system upon which the entire orderly organization of the web depends. Search engines, Internet service providers, advertising sites, and sites with user-generated content such as Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. All magnificent creations of the market are directly threatened by these bills. They will be held responsible if even a single of the millions of users post even one link to a website that a copyright holder claims is violating a copyright. Note that the under the bills as written, the Department of Justice or a copyright holder do not have to prove that their copyright was violated. They simply have to claim copyright infringement and an entire site is shut down and the owner of the site is required then to prove its innocence. The burden of these regulations on the Internet will be enormous, shifting resources away from productivity and innovation and into monitoring and censoring. It turns Internet companies into voluntary tools for big brother government, further eroding our constitutional rights. As is typical of so many bills in Congress, SOPA and PIPA, were not crafted to make life better for the American people, but rather were written at the behest of big business trying to enlist the federal government as its strong arm. For example, the Motion Picture Association of America spent more than $1.2 million so far lobbying for their passage. But the Internet community is fighting back effectively, not just with websites that went black, but with millions of users who expressed their solidarity. Congressional supporters of both bills have been jumping ship in response to the outrage. The House Judiciary Committee canceled the SOPA hearing that they were planning to hold last Wednesday. The House leadership announced that they have no intention of bringing this bill, and at the end of the week, Senator Reid announced he was postponing the vote until a compromise could be reached. The American people are speaking, and with their continued grassroots effort, the marketplace for free ideas and communications will prevail over government controls and censorship. Thanks for calling this update. A new update is placed on this number, 888-322-1414, every Monday. The written text can be found on my website, www.house.gov paul, under the heading Texas Straight Talk. Thanks for calling.